So when I'm in my home office, I'm surrounded by greatness. I'm surrounded by two of the greatest athletes that have ever walked the earth, right? So, and every time I'm looking in my computer and I can see them now because we're on Zoom, I feel like I'm just absolutely surrounded by greatness and, and it makes me play at a higher level. So here's the trick that most people don't think of. Am I willing to get leverage on myself? Love so it. Yeah. Right. So what does that mean? That means, am I willing to lean in to, to being uncomfortable? Am I, am I willing to get leverage on myself in that? What if I don't, what if I don't do this? What we're basically doing is we're connecting capital with, with, with deal flow, because all right. the people that have deal flow don't know how to raise money right. and all the people that have got money don't have access to deal flow. A very warm welcome to the Creative Dealmaker podcast. I'm Carl Allen, I'm your host, and I'm gonna be interviewing expert guests, sharing investor strategies that will completely and utterly disrupt the market when it comes to buying and selling businesses all over the world. Hey guys, Carl Allen, welcome to another episode of the Creative Dealmaker podcast. Got somebody really, really cool on the show today. Very, very good friend of mine, known her for a long time. She's an unbelievable deal maker, one of the best mindset trainers that I've ever met. And she's also in my protege enrollment team inside of protege and deal maker wealth society. So coming live from Las Vegas, Nevada, warm welcome to Tracy Thompson. How are you doing, my dear? I am fantastic, Carl. I'm so excited about this today. How fun. I know. I know. So obviously, I know you really well. You're a very dear friend of mine. But just for our audience just give them a few minutes about your background, like from where you started to like how you ended up being my buddy, doing deals, being in protege as a coach, as a trainer, and obviously as a as a deal maker as well. Wow. Okay. So my life story in two minutes. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Take three if you need it. I don't mind. Yeah, I just There's kidding. no rush. I'm just kidding. I uh, well, let's see. I I started out in, um, I've always been in some form of sales. I've always loved human psychology. I love figuring out what makes people tick, you know, why they do what they do, why they don't do what they don't do. So sales has always been um, a, a passion of mine. So I started there and eventually evolved into marketing, uh, which I believe go hand in hand, marketing and sales. And started in uh, TV and radio, believe it or not, um, making commercials. And I actually voiced a lot of commercials. I don't think I ever told you that. But Did you I, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. I I what, wrote what, the commercials. What kind of commercials? Um, the, it was a local market. So I always worked directly with the owners and um, came up with campaigns and it was super creative and it was fun. You know, it wasn't just spots and dots selling, selling airspace wasn't so fun. But when I got to work directly with the owners and ask them the deeper questions, like, how do you want to grow? Why do you want to grow? What do you want to do? What's your brand about? Yeah. Then I got to be creative. And that, nice. that really sparked my uh, copywriting career. So I started writing the commercials. I co-produced. I um, did a lot of voiceover. Sometimes I was actually in the commercials. So that was that was very fun. That so that's was... really interesting, right? So copywriting and like advertising, it's all about mm -hmm. persuasion, isn't it? And, mm -hmm. and I'm guessing those are a lot of the skills that you transition into your deal-making career because influencing a seller or an investor to join you on your deal is is all all that really matters isn't it absolutely it's it's always enrolling i it, you know either you're influencing or you're being influenced and so i learned very early on that psychology like what makes a commercial popular is the same reason that you can influence somebody when when you want to make your point, you want to make your case. So yeah, it's all about influence. Absolutely. Interesting. Talking about influence, you'll never guess who I spoke to today. Ah, who? So let's play a little quiz game, right? So <laughs> I'll give you a clue. He, he He's top of the reading list for the books I need people to read in Protégé. One of my absolute heroes in the world. 
Um, and I got connected to him through one of our new protégés that joined, uh, Rachel, um, who's done incredibly well as a deal maker, has come into protégé and was messaging me saying that she knew this person and um, that I want an intro. And I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like, I love this person. I absolutely want to talk with him. Um, he's made such a massive impact on my life. And then I've used his teachings to plug into protégés uh, to help them do deals. And he's, he's been incredible. So looking to build some really cool stuff with this person. So I don't know. I I'll like three your... guesses. Who do you think it is? Stumping me. I feel so terrible. I like I should know all the books that we're reading right now, like the back of my hand. And I don't know. I I just was so blown away by the Iron Cowboy. <laughs> yeah. That and then I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. So Come. James was on my podcast. It's not James. James was on my podcast, uh, one of the first episodes. And as you know, he keynoted at our Protege Live event in uh, in Atlanta last year. And uh, right. but but yeah, I'll I'll tell you who it is then. Um, yeah. Chris Voss. Chris Voss. Yeah, I was just talking about Chris Voss. I literally was just talking about him right before the podcast. That's so funny. Never split the difference, right? Yeah. One of the greatest books you will ever read on the guest yes. and influence. Yes. And he has a great masterclass online as well about it. So he's the uh, CEO and uh, founder of the Black Swan Group. But he was a former FBI hostage. Right. Uh, negotiator right and so he's taken awesome. all of those incredible learnings like mm -hmm. from saving people's lives mm -hmm. into into business and into deals so uh yeah i got connected with him had a chat with him earlier uh um, oh, nice. whole setup with his team um you know i'm i'm what i really want to do is plug him into the upper echelon um yeah obviously. and maybe have that, our that would be so fun. So one of one of our four mastermind echelon events uh, to fly him in for the weekend and have him do his stuff. Uh, I, that'd be pretty amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. It absolutely would. That's so funny that you said that. Yeah, I literally was just telling someone I was talking to about Split the Difference and Chris Voss. So yeah, small world. Yeah, <laughs> on the absolutely, same wavelength. absolutely amazing. So, and I don't know if you can talk about this and, and if you can't, it's fine. We can talk about something else, but um, yeah. So you, you and I have been friends for like six years, seven years, right? So we met in the top one mastermind with um, our incredibly good friend, Todd Brown. Have you seen Todd Brown recently? I know. Oh, Crazy. my God. He's Man, turned into like a bodybuilder. Jacked. This guy is ripped to <laughs> the bone, right? And it's all mindset, what? isn't it? Yeah. It's all mindset. Yeah. He looks incredible. Like the discipline that he's had to go to get to that. So anyway, we we met at, at Top One with our incredible business partner, Chris Moore. Uh, we were, became really good buddies with me, you, Chris, Clay, one of your former partners. And then we, we kind of, I think we lost touch through COVID as most people did. Mm -hmm. And then I think you and I spoke, it's about 18 months ago. I was at Abraham mm -hmm. Gray's event in Atlanta. I was speaking mm -hmm. at his... Gray Method event, his business buying event. You know, Abraham's brilliant friend of mine, business partner now. I was, he asked me to speak to his event. And I remember walking around the car park of the hotel having a conversation with you. And you were, yeah. you were working in like a big mastermind around commercial cleaning companies. Mm -hmm. I remember we were having a conversation about like a lot of these businesses they're trying to grow organically so more customers right. um more more things more services do they go into power washing or anything like that and i yeah. said really these people should be buying other companies and that gave you the idea to kind of come into protege uh, yeah. as a deal maker and then obviously bring a lot of those cleaning companies in to the program like steph both 16 16 Steph mm -hmm. both uh, Chris and Michelle Wyant, incredible yeah. deal makers that we have now in our program. Spencer Ward, he just bought with his partner, just bought that co commercial That's cleaning company. They're on to the next already. That's why. It's amazing. And uh, do you know, um, I, I just think it's amazing that you have that influence and that mm -hmm. know I can trust with that community 
to, to kind of bring them in to uh, to the protege program. And there's been some incredible successes in in, in inside of that. And I know originally you were going to do cleaning company deals, but then mm -hmm. now you're into something like really really cool. Uh, yeah. So tell tell us about. I know what it is, but uh, obviously don't need to go into too much detail. But yeah, just walk us through that the roll up that you're doing with your two partners and yeah. how amazing that's going to be. Yeah, well, I, I just want to say the power of network. I want to, before I want to preface this, the power of community and network yeah. is everything. I met you, we met each other and Chris at a mastermind. Yeah. And so when we, when we really leverage the power of our network, it's everything. So I met my two new partners, Ian and Tyler, through a conversation, inviting them in. So I got to um, enroll them into Protégé myself. So that's how I met Ian and, and uh, Tyler. And so I knew that they were working on uh, a few big projects. And the one that we combined our efforts on and I'm collaborating and a partner in nice. with them on is a really innovative, it's a real estate play, really. It's helping baby boomer landlords exit yeah. with almost zero tax burden, tax yeah. implications. Which is crazy, right? Because like one of the problems with the, the baby boomer market is um, boomers that own businesses, for example, like 60 to 70% of their liquidity is tied up yeah. in business. And if you're right. a non-business owner, baby boomer, 70% of your liquidity is tied up in real estate. So, right. so we're, we're solving, in Protégé, we're solving the problem of baby boomer business owners. Right. Uh, we're, we're cashing them out of their deals and giving them income versus capital gains. But you're solving the problem for the non-business owner boomers who have got all this real estate, they're airbnb they they've got short, short and long-term rentals, and mm -hmm. they're not getting that liquidity out of those assets. So, so how are you actually doing that? Because that's an amazing thing. It's it's really fascinating. I mean, Tyler and I, Ian can certainly speak more specifically to the mechanics. They've been working on this project for five years, developing out all of the intricacies of it. But at a high level, we're really, we're in the business now of connecting. So we're connecting these real estate investment firms who want to buy in bulk, want to buy a yeah. ton of single family residents and a multifamily um, but can't, they don't have access to that. Not have deal flow. Right. So, so they have this, we have these hungry, you know, real estate investment firms who want to buy in bulk. We have all of these thousands, hundreds of thousands of baby boomer uh, landlords who are needing to retire and exit, but they have no connection to each other. So we're that connection. So we're able to help the baby boomer make their exit almost tax-free. I mean, in most cases, the 1031 exchange environment that we bring them into yeah. um, annuitizes their retirement yeah. over time Other. and mitigates the taxes. So we're we're really in the business of connecting. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I think what what's really interesting, right? And I'm you know me, I'm old school. I, I like doing this on piece on piece of paper. So let me get two pieces of paper. I've got a yellow piece, an orange piece of paper, and I'm going to yeah. get a, a green piece of paper. So the green piece of paper. Let me get my magic marker. It's capital, right? It's capital. And then on the green piece of paper, let's do deal flow. So what's really interesting about protege and what's really interesting about all these other communities is what we're basically doing is we're connecting capital with 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 deal flow because all right. the people that have deal flow don't know how to raise money right and all the people that have got money don't have access to deal flow like i was talking to the yes. chairman of a massive angel investment network this week and they have all this capital and they just want deal flow right We've got all the deal flow in the world mm -hmm. coming out of Protégé, 
and mm -hmm. the ones that can't raise capital were able to kind of connect the two together and then that's really where, where the magic happens and there's a lot of stuff that goes on in between right you got to meet sure. sellers you got to negotiate right. terms you got to structure deals you got to do all that stuff that's easy right deal flow and capital if you can crack that or you can partner with somebody if you're the deal flow queen you find the capital king or vice versa you bring those together the rest of it is really easy right and that's what we're doing yeah we're we're the we're the people connecting the two hungry parties and it's going to be a beautiful marriage you could probably build a billion dollar company out of that and then exit it you could buy title companies you could buy wealth management firms you could buy all the businesses around like the ecosystem around yep. the whole focus of connecting investors with buying these portfolios of, of real estate and then right. you, you get it to you know a billion dollar valuation through a roll-up right mm -hmm. uh, then you could just exit that or even take it public on the stock market so could you have imagined like 18 months ago when you and I <laughs> started talking that number one you'd be the absolute number one sales enrollment person inside of my protege program and number two you'd be partners in what could be a billion dollar roll-up in the real estate industry like if I'd have said that to you like 18 months ago you'd have thought I was crazy right yeah, no, that it, it would have inspired me, but it probably would have scared me at the same time. I, I no, I couldn't have imagined. But, you know, I got to say, again, when you anyone, when we make a decision to yeah. invest in ourselves, yeah. to put ourselves out there to, you know, like get beyond that comfort zone to push ourselves that little bit more than the average Joe, the one that, you know, the mediocre, the ones that are just going to stay st where they are the rest of their lives. When we do that, man, it's magic. I, I knew Carl, when I first came into protege and I saw the people, the caliber of people, yeah. the, the deal makers you have here are incredible. I knew that life was going to change. So let, let's talk about that a little bit more because like, yeah. This this fascinates me. Like mindset as a subject really kind of fascinates me. You know, I've done all the Tony Robbins events and you followed me through that through that journey, right? You've done Date with Destiny, I believe. You've done Life of Mastery, you've done all those amazing things. And you know, when I went through the Tony Robbins stuff, um, I, I was fascinated to understand like what makes people take action, like what's right what what are people thinking like why do people do what they do and then you can then once you understand that you can model like the absolute killer people in the world the best people in the world and then if, if you follow the same regimes that they have or you do the same things that they do you're going to be able to get to get the same results but but let's talk about mindset for a minute like one of the yeah. things that um you know really kind of fascinates me about proteges is Oftentimes, like people come into protege and you know they're very, very wealthy, but they're not hungry, right? Mm -hmm. They're not hungry and get bored and decide, you know what, I'll I'll go on to the next shiny new thing. Yet you have people that come to protege and they're literally they're starving, they have no money, but they 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 make their investments come into the program and because they're so determined and so hungry. They, they absolutely crush it and become multi seven figure business owners, you know, in a matter of, you know, a couple of months. Like, like what, why is that? Like, mm -hmm. how, why, why is that so important to people? Do you think? Uh, there, you know, mindset is, is such a fascinating and, and vast it's it's a large topic but specifically here what i have found over hundreds now conversations with people that were on both sides who wanted to come here wanted to come into this world and take that step and lean in and believe in themselves um and and those who did and so i've had the privilege of seeing both psychologies right both yeah. both mindsets if you will um, I, I think it's human nature. Well, it is human nature for all of us to be aspirational. We all want the, the thing, right? We want the Rolex. We want the better life. We want to travel. We, we all have that vision. We have that compelling part of ourselves that, that compels us towards that. 
But there is, there is that piece in between that says, but can I do it? Yeah. Can I, is it for me? Is it really for me? Do you want it and, badly enough? I'm sorry? Do you, do you want it badly enough? I think right. is, is and, really important. And yes. Do, do I want it badly enough? And here's this, here's the trick that most people don't think of. Am I willing to get leverage on myself? Love so, it. Yeah. Right. So what does that mean? That means, am I willing to lean in to, to being uncomfortable? Am I, am I willing to get leverage on myself in that? What if I don't, what if I don't do this? What's going to happen to me if I don't? What's going to happen to my family if I don't? What what does my legacy look like? What does my retirement look like? If I don't do this, if I don't break out of what I'm doing right now and I stay where I try to stay where I am, um, what will that look like? And be willing to feel the pain. Just that, you know what I'm saying, right? That That feeling of like, ooh, that doesn't feel good. I don't like that. I don't like the idea of, of what my life will look like, what my my legacy will look like if I don't. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? And, and so I, I was at an event a few weeks ago and, and I got up on stage. I was keynote speaker and uh, and I, I said, and the, the talk, my presentation has been advertised, you know, how to buy a business using creative financing. So hundreds and hundreds of people in the room. So I got on the mm. stage and I said, right, put your hand up if you want to buy a business and all the hands went up <laughs> yeah and i said no you don't you don't want to buy a business no nobody wants to buy a business and they were like what what is he talking about i said we don't buy for logical reasons right we're actually buying emotions right so what does that mean so i said nobody wants to buy a business nobody wants to own a business what we want are the dimensionalized benefits that you get of being a business owner, right? And when you start to unpack this, this gives you that leverage that you've just talked about, right? So what, what do people truly want? They want right. freedom. They want mm -hmm. wealth creation. They mm -hmm. want cash flow. But even cash flow, like what is cash flow? Yeah, you can buy a Rolex. You can it's buy find $30,000 Kobe Bryant basketball jersey. But it's not the thing, it's what the thing means and the emotions that it that it stimulates, right? So, right. so take Kobe and Steph. I I dropped 50,000 bucks for these two bad boys, right? But when I'm in my office, I'm in my office here in Florida, right? So when I'm in my home office, I'm surrounded by greatness. I'm surrounded by two of the greatest athletes that have ever walked the earth, right? So, and every time I'm looking in my computer and I can see them now, because we're on Zoom, I feel like I'm just absolutely surrounded by greatness. And, and it makes me play at a higher level. So I didn't buy them for the thing. I bought them for what the thing means to me and how right. it helps me and helps me perform at that other level. There are other benefits of owning businesses. Um, Work-life balance, you know, pride, even ego in some places, you, you know, like, I've talked to a lot of protégés that they close a deal, they go to the bar with their buddies and say, you know what? I'm not an employee anymore. I'm an employer, right? Look at me. You know, I'm I'm balling, I'm flexing. I'm at that, that kind of different level. So uh, I think it's really interesting when in a lot of the mindset stuff that, that you do, that we'll, we'll talk about the women in protégé movement in a minute. Uh, yeah. It's really interesting in those early days of coming into protege, we really help you understand what you actually want, right? And who are you fighting for? Your family, yes. your community, or all those different things. And what does that mean for you? And when that's dialed into you, when you wake up in the morning and you think, ah, you know what? I don't want to call that seller back, or I don't want to put that offer in, or I don't want to speak to that lender. I'm just not doing it. If you think about what it's going to mean for you, your why, your purpose, and what you're actually fighting for, I always think that gives you the fuel to, to to kind of take it to the next level. Absolutely. And and we have to be willing to feel both sides. The the aspirational is fantastic. And some people can propel themselves just with that. But most of us need both. We need both the stick 
and the carrot. We need to yeah. be able to tap into both motivations, both yeah. those core motivations. And when you do that, man, I mean, like Kobe, I want you talking about Kobe, you know, like arguably you could say, well, he was, he was the top. He didn't need to try harder. He didn't need to push harder. But if you were to ask him, they'd be like, no, the, there's, there's the stick behind me. Like, but if I don't, I've failed. And that failure pushes by, I love, right? I love that. You have to be more. I love yeah. that. He wasn't competing against the rest of the NBA. He was competing against the better version of himself that he knew he right. could be near. Right. That's right. Right. It's like I would have failed myself. I did not become who I was meant to become. Yeah. And and you know what? I, I say this all the time. Being a deal maker is more than buying a business. Yeah. It's more than that. It's it's truly who you become. It's your identity, right? It's it your is. identity. You know, we, we all we all live our lives around beliefs, values, but your identity, who you are, is like you know, the, the kind of the ultimate, isn't it? Absolutely. But I am a deal maker. Right. Yes. Yes. And what does that mean? That embodies that freedom, that power, the, the ability to create your, your future, your legacy, like being a creator and a deal maker is synonymous. Yeah. Creative deal making. Creativity. Is 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 everything so my is. my new book's coming out next week the creative deal maker you're in it mm -hmm. as you know you're a character in my book and i could have written another technical book right uh mm -hmm. i i have you know my zero money down business buying secrets book it's you know it's a best-selling book already but i decided to write a novel or a fable and i'll tell you why i did it right because when you're buying a business or you're selling a business there's obviously there's process steps you need to go through, right? So if you're buying a business, you need to determine your buy box. Then you need to do some deal origination on market and off market. Then you got to go talk to sellers and get numbers. Then you got to work up the deal, vet the deal. Then you make offers and then you sign LOIs and then you raise capital and then you do due diligence and then you do some legals and you close the deal, right? Everybody knows that process, but what they don't understand, which is why I wrote a novel, is they don't understand the drama, the emotion, and the psychology that we go through when we transact a deal, right? And I, I liken this to having children, right? So I've got two boys, as you know, one's 16, the other one's 27. When my 27-year-old was born, that night in the hospital, I was absolutely beside myself. I didn't know what was gonna happen. I didn't know what to do. I was so emotional. I was so anxious. Am I going to be a good dad? Is he going to come out fine? Is he going to have seven arms, no head? It was horrible, right? <laughs> it was one of the worst experiences of my life because I was so nervous. But then when the second guy came out, Josh, like out he came, mm -hmm. I was fine because I knew exactly what was going to happen. So oftentimes in deal making, your first deal, either as a buyer or a seller, is, is is really, really difficult. And so what I tried to capture in the book was that emotion. So it's about a, a, a guy called Terence who's making an executive shift. He's a, a, a senior director in a large PR company and decides he wants to own his own business, doesn't want to buy one because, sorry, doesn't want to own one because that's dumb um, in terms of starting one up. He wants to acquire one that somebody else has built and doesn't want anymore. So he meets Jacqueline who's a 60-year-old retiring baby boomer, just lost her husband, wants mm -hmm. to sell her very profitable, small Chicago-based PR company. So they come together. So I tell the story of the deal through all the process steps, like the valuation, the deal mm -hmm. structure, the financing, how he originated the deal, she had other offers and how they built rapport and got on really, really well and was a great fit. But I captured like all the drama and the emotion and psychology that buyers and sellers go through when they transact on a deal, especially for the first time. So I can't wait for you to read it. You are in the book, as you know. Uh, I've changed <laughs> your last name, though. You're not Tracy Thompson. You're Tracy Topping. Uh, my, <laughs> my, my, my editor and publisher said, hey, just so you don't get into lawsuits, just change people's second names. So that's what I did. So Chris is in it. Ross is in it, 
Rossi's wife. Jess is in it. My wife's in it. Um, like loads, like Jeremy Bronson's in it, although I think I call him Jeremy Brown. Um, everyone that is close to me and has, you know, been an cr incredible part of my life, including you, I've put in the book really as a, as a kind of a thank you. But then it, it the book kind of emphasizes all your different skills. So you're the you're the enrollment coach that uh, puts the buyer into protege, and then he learns all the ways of doing deals and the support that he gets from inside of the community. So I can't wait for you to read it. It's going to be I'm going to be bringing a box of them to upper echelon. Which Yay. starts two weeks today, the next mastermind event, and I'm going to be signing all the books for everybody. Um, you will get a free copy of the book, <laughs> um, which is going to be cool. But um, let's uh, let's talk briefly about women in protege, right? So, yes. no, um, this is something that you decided to do yourself. I know you've uh, you, you've been doing it with with Brittany, who's an incredible. Yes. CPA and deal maker inside a protege, but you yeah, talk about the women in protege movement that you've created, and uh, yeah, what are your plans as a group inside of the community? Yeah, when when you and I first started talking about uh, eighteen months ago, whatever it was, um, about this space, me coming into protege, uh, the very first thing I said to you is, "Gosh, you know, I know this is a male dominated industry as a whole, yeah, but." there's suspiciously like not enough women here. And, and you said, yeah, we really, Chris and I want more. We want more women um, deal makers because they're so amazing. And the women we do have are so incredible. How do we do that? Please let's, let's lock arms. Let's figure out a way to empower more women to come here. And I believe that was r right exactly at the same time that Alexis had just started. Yeah, I mean, you were telling me that, right? What a power! Alexis, yes, very young woman, um, very young woman coming in, and the, and that was really inspiring to me. And Dr. Natasha and I connected early yep. on, yep. and um, and she and I put our heads together, and pretty soon I I proposed to both of you and uh, you and Chris that I spearhead and lead a women in protege subgroup it's yep. like a her own little meetup yep. where us women here can have our space our place and space where we can be really um unvarnished and and real with each other and support each other in ways that women we we're just wired differently we do things differently we have different life responsibilities aside from deal making and so Brittany uh, stepped up with me and we've been supporting the women in protege now. I, I don't even know how many months it's been at least six months, Yeah, maybe longer, uh, six months or longer. And it's every single time we get together, I am always blown away by the level of um, professionalism and amazing powerhouse women. And they're all so generous and so incredible in paying forward their their gifts and their talents and There's some incredible I, women in protege right really see the there's Brittany there's Julie Voss there's Alexis there's Mona Carter you've got Judith Shu um you've got Patty Plow who just bought a massive ESOC company with David Martin you've got David's wife Celine you've got Dr Natasha um you've got Crystal Anderson, there's loads of incredible people on the female side now in protege. And you know what's really interesting? Females, women, for me, um, are the best deal makers, right? There's, there's three types of people that if I look across the protege student base and I look at all the people that are just, I mean, relentlessly crushing it, buying business after business, that they're women, mm -hmm. they're salespeople, and they're retired military. Right, retired military, because we just talked about mindset. Those yeah. people are very mentally tough and will just see it through. They won't quit. Right. I love those people. I love um, uh, salespeople because they understand that deal making is a numbers game. Like uh, deal making is a numbers game, like sales is a numbers game. You've got to vet multiple prospects to get deals closed, which is really, really good. 
And then women, I, I, I just find women, again, they don't quit. They, they, they're very, very coachable. They follow the rules and they're very meticulous and they're very detailed um, and they don't take unnecessary risks. So, so women salespeople that are former military are probably the greatest deal makers on the planet. I also like real estate investors, right? Real estate yeah. investors make phenomenal business buyers and deal makers because a lot of their skill sets are very transferable. They, they, they know how to originate deal flow. Mm -hmm. They know how to talk to people. They know how to negotiate. They know how to raise capital. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's all these amazing pockets of deal makers that are kind of sprouting out. But I love the women in protege movement. I'm, I, I'm probably not invited, but if you ever want me to come on one of those calls one day and chat, be happy to do so. But they probably say, no, it's women only. <laughs> Uh, we we adore you. We talk about you behind your back. That's, you do. It's all Aww. it's all good. Cool. It's all good. So. Yeah. So I I just want to say something, Carl. We changed lives. I I mean I just all the way across the board. We are affecting so many people in what we do as deal makers. We're affecting the sellers' lives, their family the families of the businesses that we we own when we take over we're affecting all of our lives inside each other's lives inside this community we're affecting our family our legacy if you really look at this this is this is about transformation yeah this isn't just about business this isn't just about buying a business our knowledge it's about really, truly evolving who we are individually and then by extension, changing the lives of everyone around us. Yeah. I, I feel very strongly about that. Thank you for saying that. That's And, and, and that, that's so true. We, we, we really aren't in the coaching business, are we? We're in the empowerment business. And Absolutely. I, I look at some of the stories um, like, like Michael Scott, you know, did a no money down deal, sold it for $114 million, right? And now he's helping other protégés and even investing in their deals, right? It, it, it's crazy how he's paying it forward. And you look at Abraham Gray, he's done over 100 acquisitions. Um, he did a lot of those before he came into protégé, although he's been following my stuff for a long, long time. But again, he's investing in people's deals. He's helping people. Everyone's got that pay it forward kind of kind of mentality. Um, so true. Yeah, it really is. It really is amazing. And um yeah, it's it's and this is my mission, Tracy, right? So like if you look at the marketplace, if you look at the United States, what's crazy is you've got two and a half million businesses or so that are on the market available to buy. Yet every year, about seven million Americans will go and start a brand new business from scratch, right? A business that's got no revenue, no customers, no employees, no brand, no reputation, mm -hmm. no credibility, but they do it anyway, right? Yet they should just go and buy a business like 96% of startups fail in 10 years. My message to these people is go and buy a business that's 10 years old, right? right. Buy it using other people's money. And then it's right. like being a marathon, but starting at the 100 yards from, from the finish line, right? Uh, right? And a lot of people don't get that. But a lot of people think it's really cool to start a company and then not have any yeah. capital for two years. I, you know what I think is really cool? Cash flow. Yeah. You can buy a company, you can walk into cash flow on day one, right? A lot of people don't realize that. Um, they'd rather go through the hustle and the strife and the brain damage of building something from scratch. I, I just don't understand it. Um, the only business I've ever started was Dealmaker Wealth Society. Yeah, right. Never started a business. I've always bought companies. Um, but this is the only ever, only ever the business I started. But then we've scaled up now to a huge business, but we've acquired five of the companies into what we do. We bought a real estate coaching company. I was going to say, now you're buying coaching companies. We're buying coaching companies. Right. right? Because we're talking to our protégés and they're saying, well, hey, I'm making all this money from my businesses. I'm taking these distributions. Mm -hmm. I want to invest in real estate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, yeah, I've done some real estate deals, but I'm not a world-class coach like I am on the business side. So I went and acquired a company called Partner Driven that, that does that, right? So we we right. brought them into the portfolio. 
And, you know, yes, we're scaling that business, but we're allowing protégés to kind of get involved in that. And and Peter, who's our partner in that deal, uh, we, we bought a majority share of that company. He stayed in for a bit because he, he likes us. He's speaking at the upper echelon mastermind uh, two weeks. So you'll get to meet Peter, lovely man from Atlanta, mm -hmm. great deal maker. He's going to be sharing a lot of his creative real estate deal lessons and how we can translate those into our business acquisitions. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool. So I'm going to let you go. Um, I know we're coming up on, uh, on time out, but Tracy really appreciate you um, coming on today and sharing your wisdom and uh, telling some stories with me. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode and I will see you soon for the next creative dealmaker podcast until then. Bye for now.